The Go ecosystem is packed with a bunch of different tools that can improve your workflow in many different ways. After years of shipping Go production code, I've distilled my toolbox down to a few tools I always use that have always paid dividends. And in this video, I'll show you how each of these tools work in my workflow, why they might be worth a place in your own toolkit. And if anything, I'll just introduce you to some tools that maybe you never heard about before that you can check out on your own time. All right, let's kick things off here with SQL C, SQL C, Squeal C, whatever you want to call it. This is basically a SQL compiler or a uh, generator that creates uh, type safe code from SQL. Uh, it's written in Go and it's fairly straightforward. You basically write your queries in SQL and then you run SQL C to generate the type safe interfaces, which then you can use kind of like functions in your application code. So the way SQL C works is you have this YAML file, which defines everything. You can see your engine, where your queries are defined, the schema. And then this is an example. So you have your schema defined here. This is just an author's table with a few columns. And then you have the query.sql file, which defines the actual SQLs. And you have this name flag here. This is required for SQL C to execute. So you need these. Uh, with the actual SQL uh, definition, the SQL function definition. And then you can see all you do is run the SQL C generate command. You'll get the output tutorial, which comes from that YAML definition above. And then you'll be able to use those queries as functions. Very simple. You can see, you know, you have this list authors, queries dot list authors, authors, which takes the context. And this is just running this query here. And you can see all the other functions as well as create author, uh, get author. Um, and there's a probably delete one here as well. So SQL C is a very cool SQL builder, makes it super easy to use SQL that you run for your application in the business logic of your app. Now, following that and on the topic of SQL and databases, the next tool that I really like to use is Goose, which is a database migration tool. It's both a CLI and a library, and it just so happens to also be written in Go. Okay, and to show you what Goose does, I'll actually show an example in this little project I'm building. Um, and here you can see I have the SQL definition with these Goose flags. You can see Goose up, statement begin, statement end, and Goose down. And uh, before I even go into the core purpose of Goose, I actually want to show you how I use Goose in a different way. So I have this kind of file called migrate.go, which uses Goose, as you, can, as you can see. And really what I do is when my application starts up, I use either the migrate up or migrate down to kind of set and seed all my database with all the files I have from the uh, migrations folder, which will contain all the other SQL files I have. So you can see you have two SQL files right now using the embed package as well. It makes it super easy. I just pass this directory into my goose calls and it can just spin everything up for me. It's pretty easy. But really, most of the time you use Goose to kind of define your SQL uh, and your schema. As you can see here, I have this users table, nothing too crazy. I have the up to handle my migration up command. I have my down to handle my migration down command. And you can see here, I have Docker running my Postgres image for my database and I'm connected to it via PSQL. You can see I can run select all from users. And you can currently see that I have, you know, the following columns of ID, username, email, password hash, created at and updated at as the definition of the current schema. Now with Goose, what you can do is you can see I'm in a directory where I have that migration uh, folder, and then I can just run a pretty simple Goose command here. So I can do Goose, the directory that has all the SQL files, the driver, and then the connection string, and you can do down, I'll do up. You can see if I run this, you can see it ran the uh, correct migration file. So here I have this very simple migration file, which adds a column to my users table. And if I run down, it'll drop that column. And if we go back to PSQL and if I run select all from user again, you can see now we have this new last login at column. And I can simply just go back and run the exact same command. But instead of up, I can just do down. And it'll go back to the previous version of Goose. I can go one more time, you can see it's no longer there. And if you're asking how does Goose track all this? Well, if you do a slash DT, you'll see you have this Goose DB version, which keeps track of the current version your database is at relative to all the migration commands you have currently run. 
The next tool is something I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but I know a lot of people use is Goat Releaser. This is a very cool tool. It's created by this individual named Carlos who works at Charm and Goat Releaser. It's also written in Go. And what it does is basically what it states here. It handles the complexity complexities of releasing so you can focus in building what really matters, your software. What that means is it basically it's this pipeline that allows you to tag your project or tag your repo, cross compile them, sign them, package them, you know, tar, zip, binder, whatever it is. And then it uploads everything to GitHub or I'm pretty sure GitLab as well for releases. So other people can just use your application. I use it. It's really fun. It makes my job a lot easier and it's great. Which leads me to the next tool I want to talk about. It's Go Blueprint. This is a tool I created, so I'm going to not go too in depth about it. I've had plenty of videos on this, but we do in fact use Go Releaser for uh, Go Blueprint. So I am serious to talk about these tools that help my workflow. But Go Blueprint, anytime I want to spin up a new project, I've always found myself doing the exact same thing over and over again. I even showed you an example here where I had this kind of a Docker Compose file. I use this all the time. I always use Postgres. And then every time I set my project, I typically always depend on a database. And instead of running it all from scratch over and over again or copy and pasting from one repo to another, I rely on Go Blueprint, which allows me to just spin something up super fast using the CLI. I can pick what I want. Typically, it's Chi, Postgres, and that's it. That's kind of my bread and that's all I really need. But if anytime I want to go deeper and check other things, I can pick different options here as well. So this just saves me a lot of time, a lot of boilerplate for spinning up a new Go project every time I'm tinkering or trying to do something uh, for fun, experiment, whatever. And we have some pretty cool documents as well. As well, go blueprint.dev. You can see how your project will be structured if you use certain components. Uh, we even offer kind of a front end aspect as well. So that's that's fun. You can see the command to use if you want the same structure for your project. And the last kind of two tools are something I probably talked about before. One is uh, very obvious. This is a go.env. I'm really sure most people who use Go know this package and use it. It's written entirely in Go. And basically this just allows you to use .env's a lot easier, a lot more stable. You can see it's super easy to use. You can see there's the import and you can just load your .env's and you can use them uh, fairly easier, easy with the os.getenv command. Um, yeah, I mean, this doesn't really introduce anything game changing. I do think though, every time I run a project, I use go.env. So I want to add it to this video. And in case you never heard about it, uh, you should check it out and give it a start. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about is Air. Again, I had a video about this before, so I'll go pretty quickly about this. But basically, this is hot reloading for your Go applications. I know there's some alternatives that uh, exist. I haven't used them. I prefer Air. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. You don't really need a custom uh, configuration file, but it does give you the option of having your own custom config file to listen to what files you want to hot reload on or exclude some files they don't want to hot reload on, which is this air example dot or air dot file. And basically, as it says, whenever you spin up a Go project uh, you, and you run Go, you know, uh, run main.go and it's linked to a server, if you make a change, you have to kind of save it, tear it down and restart the server. With this, you don't have to do that. It just hot reloads everything for you. And that's pretty cool. It's pretty easy. It makes it very, very simple to use. And it's just going to save you a lot of time. So yeah, every time I spin up a Go server, I always have air running to make sure I don't need to tear it down and tear it back up. All right, so those are the five or six, I, I think six tools I always use in my workflow. They've helped me quite a bit. I really like them. Give them a start. Links will be in the description down below. But I'm curious if there's any tools that you use that I haven't talked about. Let me know. Maybe I should, I should check them out. Maybe we should make a video about them. I always love seeing new projects, new kind of these tools that solve a problem for me or just save me time. So if you have anything, let me know. Comment down below. And if you're coming by and if you're just sticking around, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more videos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I have a new video coming out about a concurrency project I've been working on for a chat application. It's actually already public on my repository on my GitHub. So check it out if you want to get ahead of the curve or you can wait for the next video that will drop whenever that's done. So if you guys enjoyed this, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.